Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. I teach antique lovers how to create successful vintage and antique businesses that they'll love. One of the ways I do that is through videos like today's in which I'm going to be focusing on transfer wear. You might be asking, what is transfer wear? Well, it's beautiful china dishware like this piece that you see here. This is by a company called um, Newport Pottery. The beautiful um, flora and fauna design. The transfer wear process developed in England in the late 1700s. It involved creating beautiful intricate designs, etching them on copper plates, and then inking them and pressing them onto thin paper, a tissue paper, and then that would be pressed onto a piece of dishware and fired in a kiln. And that's how the design was transferred from the copper plate to the tissue paper to the dishware, like the platter that we just looked at. And what it meant was that middle-class families could now afford beautiful dishware because prior to that the only kind of decorated china that you could find would have been decorated or hand painted um, decorated by hand so here's an example of a plate that was hand painted it's a newer american plate but just to give you the idea of what hand painting might look like and you could buy an entire set of dishes that was hand painted but each one would be slightly different than the other whereas with transfer wear, each piece was identical to the other because of this transfer process. Transfer wear was made in a number of different colors, including the blue and the white, as we've already seen, and brown, like this beautiful piece, purple or mulberry. You could also find it in yellow and black and pink or red, and sometimes even in multicolors. You can also find examples of transfer wear that were also hand painted. So the transfer wear on this Furnival plate, this is aesthetic period um, decoration, um, the brown is the part that was transferred, and then the colors were all added by hand. They were all painted on um, under the glaze, so it's protected, but nonetheless, a combination of transfer wear and hand painting, which can produce some beautiful designs. This is a Copeland uh, Spode plate. Um, the pattern is called Reynolds. So the transfer wear, again, is brown, but the color is added by hand. Beautiful pieces. Initially, the designs were modeled after Asian designs that were very popular at the time. You probably recognize this blue willow plate, um, but other designs became very popular, including floral designs, like you see on this Ridgeway plate, English Ridgeway plate, and historic or um, important nas national or natural sites like this Niagara Falls plate, and landscapes like this countryside pattern plate by Wedge Wedgwood. England wasn't the only country to produce transfer wear. Countries like Germany also produced beautiful transfer wear. This is a piece by Vilroy and Bosch. Vilroy and Bosch. Here's another German plate that I am absolutely in love with. This beautiful rabbits unknown maker, but made in Germany. And Holland, of course Holland's known for its Delft, but this is a piece of beautiful transfer wear. And Japan, this is a uh, Phoenix pattern made in Japan very, very popular pattern, and also made it in America. You may have wondered, what's the difference between flow blue, China, and transfer wear China? 
Well, the main difference is the way that it was processed because initially a flow blue piece would have had a transfer wear pattern applied to it in the same traditional way. But due to a happy accident or somebody experimenting, we'll probably never know, the flow blue um, type of decoration was developed where um, different chemicals were added into the firing process that allowed the pattern to be, I call it smudged or blurred or intensified in some cases. Um, there's, that's a beautiful plate by um, G.H. Grindley of England. Most pieces were made in England and here's another piece by New Wharf Pottery, even uh, stronger um example of the of the deep intense cobalt blue on that piece so it is transfer wear technically but we call it flow blue at one point 20 or so years ago it was extremely popular and sold for very high prices that the values have really plummeted um, except for on um, rare, unique, or large pieces. And that leads me to what sorts of transfer wear sells well today. Because just like Flow Blue, transfer wear in general has uh, taken a bit of a dive as far as values go. My experience has been that larger antique pieces as well as uh, antique smaller pieces and unique pieces are what sells. Here's an example of a larger piece. It's not huge. I don't have anything bigger than this on hand right now, but um, I call it chrysanthemum, but it, it's technically called old Foley. I don't know what that means, but um, this should sell for about $25. Here's a, an antique piece that's small that should sell for about $12 to $15. This is a toy a creamer or toy pitcher from a child's set. I find that larger antique pieces sell well from my antique booth where smaller antique pieces and somewhat unique pieces sell well from my Etsy shop. Here's an example of a of an antique piece. Even though dinner plates generally don't sell well, um, transfer uh, dinner plates, this piece will sell because it is an antique. Um, it doesn't even have a, um, a manufacturer's mark. I believe that says England and then that's the name of the pattern, um, Alhambra. Um, I don't know if that's the name of the castle or not, but in any event, this piece should sell from an antique booth for about $15 to $20 and could sell more on Etsy. Unique pieces would include um, things in rare colors, like mulberry is a relatively rare color, yellow and black even more so, and they will tend to sell well also. I recommend avoiding newer transfer wear. This is a piece of Liberty, Liberty Blue China that was extremely popular in the 1970s when it was produced and marketed through um, grocery stores, sometimes as a premium. And women across the country uh, worked to put together entire sets, eight place settings, 12, sometimes more. There is an enormous amount of Liberty Blue on the market. And other than serving pieces, which continue to sell for fairly good prices, I don't recommend buying um, individual pieces like plates and teacups and saucers and that sort of thing, unless you can pick it up for next to nothing and sell it for very low prices. You don't want to fill up your antique booth with it. It will take time to sell.